the lesson, I could almost end on this verse. But no, why end on the verse when I can actually say something here? But here is the word for today from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. For it is by grace that you've been saved through faith. This is not of your own doing, it is a gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. Here ends the lesson. Um, this is an important lesson today because if you are like me, there are times in your life where you go through those severe famines and doubts at times of struggle and travail. In fact, there was a, uh, a rabbi, Rabbi Harold Kushner, who wrote the book, Why Bad Things Happen to Good People. He said recently, uh, and I think I've quoted this recently as well too, that if you don't struggle with agnosticism at least once every other week, you're not wrestling strong enough with your faith. He said every single one of us doubts, wonders, worries, and uh, that doesn't mean that all of a sudden you're going to hell. See, that's what a lot of churches teach you. I think doubt is a good thing, but here we are talking about faith, and you're going to hear the word doubt and to get rid of doubt, but you have to understand that Jesus uses the word doubt a little bit differently than what we do and what we mean. It is okay to question. It is okay to have those doubts in your mind. I wonder if I'm giving my life for the right things. But we still take a step forward and do it anyway. It's kind of like courage. Remember the old uh, World War II pilot, Eddie Rickenbacker, who was really considered to be a daredevil back in his day. He was the ace of aces of, of the United States of America. And uh, he was asked one time by a reporter, you have to understand, they flew these Newport 27s, which was a really fragile plane. These things were made of wood and covered with fabric that was then covered with dope. Dope, not dope like drugs but kind of a, a dope if you've worked with that type of material before that is really flammable with an engine that can catch on fire in an instant your plane could burn within a second they didn't wear parachutes and so the reporter came up to say boy you must be really courageous you don't have any fear at all and he said are you stupid I'm afraid every time I get into that airplane he said being courageous isn't about not being afraid being courageous is about doing what you're afraid of anyway See, what faith is, the difference between faith and a lack of faith, because doubt is not the opposite of a lack of faith. Doubt is a reasonable thing. The difference between faith and, and, and a lack of faith is that faith just says, even though I doubt, I'm going to keep pressing forward and do the thing that I'm afraid or doubt to do. We use... Uh, Illustration. I, I'm just so not following the handout for today. And that's all good. Who cares? Because this is important. Why should today be different? Why would today be any different? That's right on. So, I uh, am a track coach, a lot of you know. And I used to run track. I was a hurdler. And I remember the very first time we hurdled. Now, you have to understand, we ran on cinder tracks. So, that was my track back at Peters Township High School back in 1853, right? And so I had this center track we're running on, and the first time I'm going over the hurdle, and uh, I tell you, it's a scary thing. Because those things, well, we kept them low at the start, but still, you doubt whether or not you're going to be able to get, get over it. And so you start running at the hurdle, you run to the hurdle, and then the doubt's in the back of your mind, so you kind of put on the skids, the brakes, and you slam the hurdle, go rolling over, and slam on your face, and I still have sitters in, driven into my knees from my days back falling over those hurdles. And, and skidding on the track. And that's true. I'll show them to you if you want to see them sometime. Yeah, okay. But no, that's okay. Nobody wants to see my knees. But nevertheless, that's what doubt is. The doubt sometimes will get us to stop before we get over that hurdle. And my coach kind of looked at me and said, well, you know, you got to just get up and just try to get over it. You might fail, but trust me, if you fail, it won't hurt as bad as stopping right before the hurdle. And so I tried to do that. And I just ran through the hurdle. And you know what? I hit the hurdle, but nothing bad happened. And then I eventually had the courage that I could just keep go over that thing. And that's kind of what faith is. Faith is not stopping. You might fail. You might have that doubt in the back of your mind. I may not make it, but dag it, I'm going to try. That's, I think, what faith is. So in our lesson for today, I, I, I'm going to cut some of this out, but it is 
you know, faith is a substance, it's a foundation of our, of our lives, it's a conviction um, that not everything in the universe can be known by our senses. And uh, we can go on, but how can you unleash this thing called faith? I've already talked to you a little bit about the difference between faith and doubt and a lack of belief. Again, doubt is not a lack of belief. Doubt is reasonable. I think it's a reasonable thing sometimes to say, is my belief in God a reasonable thing? I think that's a normal thing. But what Jesus goes on to say, and let's skip down to that, how can I unleash the power of God through faith? Jesus answered, have faith in God. Make God the subject of your faith. And truly I tell you, if any one of you says to this mountain, in other words, if anyone calls upon the name of God and says to this mountain, be thrown to the sea, and if you do not doubt in your heart, but believe that this will come to pass, it will be done for you. So he says, you need to ask for it. Now, let me qualify that. It, it reminds me of a time when I was, uh, my, I was in college, I was just getting married, and it was back in 1980 something, I don't remember, 84, I remember that. So that was the year we got married. And my parents were, were moving from Pittsburgh to Texas, and my wife, my, my, my wife, my, uh, my mom had this collection of Shakespeare's works, and I wanted them so badly. I just wanted them. I loved them. And I just, because I loved the books, and I was, had been reading them at that point, and uh, I, did, I, I would always go home, and I'd do this real passive-aggressive thing. I, you know, I'd pull the, the book off the shelf and say, oh, these books are so nice, and then I'd put it back on the shelf, hoping they kind of offer it to me at some point, and say, well, we don't want to move with these things down to Texas. And they never did. Never, ever, ever did. Found out about a year later when, um, that they sold them. And I said, you sold them. I wanted those. Well, you should have asked, right? If I would have asked, they would have been very glad to give them to, to me. Sometimes we don't receive because we don't ask. And so I think that's part of the discipline of our faith and our relationship with God. Ask God to be a part of your life. Ask God to move your mountains. And he goes on to say, but don't doubt it, that God is going to provide you. Don't doubt the goodness of God for you. He loves you enough that like any good parent, he's going to give you those things within his will that you ask for. Now, remember a couple of weeks ago I said, if you ask God for a million bucks, God, give me a million bucks. Guess what God does? I gave you two hands, I gave you feet. Get off your butt, get working. That's what God's going to answer. You can ask him. All right, same thing, I want, a, I want a Maserati. Get off your butt, use your hands, use your feet, work for a living, go earn it, okay? God's given you all those tools and all those resources to do those things. But I think what, what Jesus is referring to is sometimes those mountains in our lives that seem to be obstacles that are bringing us to a time of despair. Those mountains that we just can't get over, you take them to God in prayer, and God will help you over them or remove them for you. Um, so how to keep strong in your faith? We're going to skip down to that. So how do you stay strong in your faith? You stay in your relationship with other Christians. We're going to talk about that in a couple of weeks. Because Christian faith is not a private matter. It reminds me when I came to this church... I uh, would go on a visit with everybody in the church, and I went to the, one, of, one of our council members, actually. And one of the questions I would ask people is, tell me a little bit about your faith. What, what does your faith mean to me? And, and this guy looked at me and said, that's private. It's none of your business. And I'm like, but I'm your pastor. It's none of your business. I'm like, since when did faith become a private matter? Faith is meant to be shared. You know, I mean, if you're a fan of the Pittsburgh Steelers, you wear your shirt, Steeler shirt. You don't say it's a private matter. It's none of your business what team I root for. You show people what team you're rooting for. And the same thing is true with our faith. It's meant to be shared with other people called the church. You need to be diligent and relentless because we looked at that last week. We looked at the power of evil that is loose and exists in this world. You can't give up because when you give up, when things go wrong, you just say, oh, I've had enough of this life. Satan wins. 
okay? Never give Satan the uh, satisfaction for victory. I will tell you, during my greatest times of despair at this church, where I just thought I was ready to kill people in this church, yeah, I've had those times, okay? Really. When we were trying to transform this church because the community was changing and we had uh, all these uh, folks in the community that were they were poor folks, they weren't like the folks that were in the pews of the church and we're trying to find a way to do outreach to the, to, the, to the community and the folks in the churches resisted that. I knew what it was like to be Moses. I just felt like when Moses was so tired of the rabble of Jews that he was leading, he said, God, if you really love me, kill me now. That's the way I felt, okay? I really wanted God just to bring a mountain top, top down on my forehead because that sure would have been nice. But um, the one thing that kept me going is I said, I don't want to give those who oppose me the satisfaction of winning. There's nothing wrong with that. But look at it another way. I don't want to give Satan the satisfaction of having their victory over me. Not going to happen. There have been times they've been close. But I think that's what faith is about, to give us the courage to basically, as I said last week, turn our rear to them and let loose some wind and let them know how much we respect them. Lastly, be bold before God. Be bold. Remember what Christ did for you and that ultimately your confidence comes not from your own goodness but from the love that God has for you. See, so oftentimes we're just kind of measuring our lives out. God, I'm not sure I'm good enough for you. I'm not sure this. Stop using a measure to compare yourself to other people or what God's expectations are because God doesn't even do that. We do that to ourselves. All God wants from you is for you just to love Him because God just adores and loves you. So you need to transform your way of thinking about your relationship with God. The only person that puts the burdens upon you that says you've got to measure up, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, is yourself. God isn't doing that to you. Or other people in other churches. I've been to other churches where they just heap upon you burden after burden after burden of things that you got to do to have your life together with God. I would never go to a church like that. Okay? What God does for us is relieve our burdens so we can just be free to have a loving relationship with God. Think of it in terms of your parents. Now, I know not everybody has perfect parents, but think of it in terms of the ideal parents who just love you because they just love you, just like Janice, the ideal parents, right? Who just love you and are going to be there for you and are going to help you. That's all God wants from you. He just wants to, you to trust Him to be there to help you. That's what faith is. So I'm here to alleviate your burdens today. I think that's what God wants to do, and I think that's what faith does. You're taking your kids. Take your, by taking, I'm taking your kids. Is that what faith is? Right on. <laughs> right. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that <clears throat> we can just put all of our, our burdens in your care. We trust that you will take them. We trust that we no longer have to carry the burdens of trying to measure up because it's a gift that you give to us because you just love us. We're your kids. We thank you for that. And we pray for a deeper, more abiding faith. I know sometimes our faith wanders. We doubt. Doubt is not a bad thing. It's okay to doubt. It's okay to question. But what we need to do in those times of doubt is just keep plowing ahead regardless of our doubts. So we ask you to restore the hope the faith, and the joy in every person here today. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.